you did say to me you'd like me to speak about Dante, so I did mm. sort of get my little Dante collection out, mm. and I, I, I'd like to read four lines. Okay. And uh, after I've read the four lines, I'd like in, in Italian, and then I'd like to read them in English, a translation mm. in English, and I'd like to recommend a, a really brilliant translation, uh, a new translation that's only recently come out from an American called J. Simon Harris. But before I do that, I'd just like to read this. And just to give a quick context for it, this is actually Canto Five of the Inferno. It's one of the most famous cantos in the whole of the Divine Comedy mm. poem. And it's Francesca and Paolo. And they are two lovers. Mm. And this all in Circle of the Lust, whole, yes. Yes. Troubadour tradition, chivalry, King Arthur, King Guinevere, the adultery of Guinevere with Lancelot is alluded to in this. Mm -hmm. And it's a terrible situation. And you feel for them. And Dante feels for their situation because, of course, she's having an affair with her husband's brother and he brutally murders both of them before either of them have an opportunity to repent from this sin of adultery. So they are in hell. But the situation is dire. And the, and the actual um, canto ends with these four lines. It ends, Mentre che l'uno spiato questo di se l'altro piangea si che di piatara io veni men così come io morisse e cadi come copo morto cade just read that last line again e cadi come copo morto cade what's this all mean mm. well what it means is j simon harris dante's inferno great book uh, great translation the last four lines mean while the one spirit spoke, that is Francesca, the other wept, that is Paolo, so that, from pity then, my senses all grew faint as if I were approaching death. And then I fell as a dead body falls. Now, in English, you can hear, can't you, the drama in that last line. I mean, the, the sheer overwhelm of the emotion. And mm. then fell as a dead body falls but if we look at the italian you get exactly the same only more so e cadi como corpo morto cade it's actually an am in fact italian isn't in iambic it's not a stress base but this is actually perfect iambic pentameter with a hypermetric syllable at the very end so 11 syllables there's 11 syllables in the line but look at that cade piatade rhyme cade come corpo cade the alliteration, the corpo morto, corpo morto, the assonantal vowel sound, e cade como corpo morto cade, the kind of emphatic falling down. Even in the Italian, if you don't, you know, if you're not, if you're not, if you don't speak Italian, you can hear the absolute power of that language and the emphaticness of it all. And he just, like a dead body, just collapses. I mean, the whole of Dante is so visual. In fact, videre, to see, after to be and to have, after the verbs to be and to have, is the most common verb that's used in the whole of the poem, to see, to see, to see. He's always mm. seeing stuff. This is an incredibly visual poem. And I'm trying to make my own version of this visual as well. Mm. That was oh. always one of my favorite cantos. I'm kind of curious about the brother there. What happened to him? I mean, you'd think he'd end up in the murderer's circle. Does well, Dante no, mention no, him no. again? Or it does mention him. And in fact, what it mentions, if I can just find it, let me just see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. She says, love led the two of us to a single death. Cana awaits the one who deprived us of life. And that is a genius line. Mm. Cana. The land of Cain, the land mm. of Cain and Abel, Cana, the land of Cain, awaits the one. It's so understated. She doesn't start raging, oh, that B, that effing blah, 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 he did this, it was so unfair. It's just suddenly the one who did this, Cana. And Cana, of course, is a lower depth in hell. It's where the mm. ice is. It's mm. where Satan is. It's, it's actually where the traitors are. Oh. He awaits the one who deprived us of life. So there's this incredible foreboding. So here we get in the stand, in, we're in Canto 5, there are 34 in the Inferno, 34. So now we know that lower down, so the lust near the top, uh, a lesser sin. And as we get lower, we're going where the murderers and the traitors are.
I do like that Italian. It does flow off the tongue. I like to. I do like to read translations that have the dual text and just look at the. You know, look at the original language and see how it flows. Oh, and too. often, yeah, you know, and too. often, you know, when you're reading a bad free verse translation or something that's overly literal, you can again notice how it really doesn't capture the spirit of the original no, at all. That's one the problem spirit. I have. Can you recommend mm. this? Jane Simon yes. Harris, who is a classical poet. <clears throat> uh, that, that's a thick volume. There are a lot of footnotes in that volume. Yes, loads of like, great notes yes. as well. Yes, J. Simon Harris doesn't deprive you. The only other version that gives you such great notes is the Dorothy L. Sayers version. Mm -hmm. I do like that fabulous, version, yes. Fabulous notes. Dorothy L. Sayers version actually gives you great notes as well, but mm -hmm. that is another take on it. It's really good. Now, the Sayers uh, translation was kind of an inspiration for you, wasn't yes. it, in your own, yes. in your method, especially your, your rhyming method. I think I read the Sayers translation kind of shortly before I actually encountered your own work, auspiciously, I guess you might yes. say. Yes. I noticed your, yes. I think your dedication to it was taken from something that she said. About a, yes, actually. What was it? About an, if an Englishman were to write. Here it comes. It's the actual, one of the three epigraphs. I have three epigraphs per book. Mm. So there's nine epigraphs in total. It's a magic number for me. So the epigraph from Dorothy says, let us suppose that an Englishman were to write a contemporary divine comedy on Dante's model. Mm. This was one of the key texts I read that inspired. I thought, yeah, what a good idea that is. What a good idea that is. And can you see, I mean, one of the important implications of it about reading generally, since most people don't read anymore, but what, is that you know, we get our ideas from reading. If, we don't, if I hadn't read that, would I have actually carried off what I've carried off? It inspired me, and you're, I know you're inspired by so many writers. I'm inspired. So mm -hmm. many people on the Society of Classical Poets website are inspired by other writers. It's, it's the right thing to be. If all we're going to do is rely upon our own intelligence and inspiration to write stuff, it's going to be very thin gruel, mm -hmm. very thin fare. It's going to be very lacking in substance. We actually need other people to actually develop a real richness and texture and and and, 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 and genius if mm -hmm. we want to be genius we have to have and acknowledge other people are geniuses because we're relying on their work to help our work mm, yeah i mean that's the paradox of originality right i mean true originality yes. is based on yes. models right you're basing yourself on models and you're not just making stuff up which is when we get to the you know contemporary age that's just what everybody's doing and it stinks it's terrible